Okay. Uh, in this particular lesson, what we're going to be doing is looking more specifically at a certain part uh, of the quadratic formula called the discriminant, um, which has to do with determining the nature of the roots for a quadratic equation. Uh, in the last lesson, what we learned is for a quadratic equation in standard form, which is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, uh, the x-intercepts, or the roots, are equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over a denominator of 2a. Uh, in this particular lesson, we're not going to be looking at actually calculating the values of the x-intercepts. Rather, we're going to be looking at what's called, again, the nature of the roots, or in other words, how many x-intercepts there are. Um, as we've learned previously, a quadratic equation can have zero, which, as an example, could look something like this. One, which, as an example, could look something like this. Or two roots, which could look something like this. Uh, we can determine the number of roots, which is also called or known as the nature of the roots. quickly without actually calculating the values of the roots. Uh, one thing that we have noticed when we were solving using, using the quadratic formula is there's some importance to this b squared minus 4ac part under the radical sign. Uh, for example, if b squared minus 4ac, which is also called the discriminant, uh, if that is negative, or in other words, less than zero, there will be zero roots because you can't square root a negative. Uh, on the other hand, if b squared minus 4ac or the discriminant is equal to zero, uh, what we will find out is that there is always one x-intercept or one root because the square root of zero is zero and adding or subtracting zero in the numerator of the quadratic formula gives only one solution. Uh, thirdly, if b squared minus 4ac is a positive value, or in other words, greater than zero, there will always be two x-intercepts, or two roots, because adding or subtracting a value greater than zero in the numerator of the quadratic formula will give two solutions. Um, so let's look at three examples having to do with this. Uh, it says determine the value of the discriminant and the nature of the roots for each equation. Uh, so in this particular one, it's already in standard form, so we know that a is equal to negative 1. Uh, b is equal to 3, and c is equal to 5. Uh, if it just asks in the value of the discriminant, it wants to know what b squared minus 4ac, which I suggest putting in brackets, is equal to, and that's equal to uh, 3 squared minus 4 times negative 1 times 5, which is 9 minus negative 20, which is 29. That's the value of the discriminant. Uh, and what we just learned in the lesson is that because that's a positive value, there will be two x-intercepts. Uh, so the number of roots would be two roots. Let me show you that uh, on a graphing calculator. If I was to graph this function, you will see that I get two roots, one, two. All right, let's look at the next example. In the next example, it's already also in standard form. A is equal to 2, B is equal to negative 16, and C is equal to 32. Uh, so if I calculate the value of the discriminant, I would get negative 16 squared minus 4 times 2 times 32, which is 256 minus 256. So the value of the discriminant is 0. And what we've learned from a value of a discriminant being zero is that there will be one root uh, because you will be adding and subtracting zero from some value in the numerator, which will only give you one solution. Let me show you the graph of this particular uh, <clears throat> quadratic function just to show you. Uh, when we look at that one, you'll see that, yes, we have just one root. It bounces off or just deflects off uh, the x-axis. Uh, in the final example, You'll see here that it is not yet in standard form. There's a couple things we need to do. First is to make it equal 0, and then make sure the ax squared term is first, the bx term is second, and the c term is third. So the value of the discriminant in this particular case uh, will be, I'll show you, it will be negative. Uh, and we will get here that we have 100 minus, 
144, which is negative 44. That's the value, again, of the discriminant. And as we know, the nature of the roots in this particular case would be that there are zero roots. And once again, let me just show you this quadratic function, 12x squared minus 10x plus 3, just to prove to you that there will be zero roots. And there we go. You'll see that it never quite touches the x-axis, so there's zero roots. Uh, there's some other um, applications of this particular concept. Let's look at some here. This first one says the graph of y is equal to 2x squared plus kx plus 18 has one root or two equal roots. Determine the value of k. Well, we know that if there is one root, we know that the discriminant, or b squared minus 4ac, has to be equal to zero. Okay. Uh, if we substitute the values we know, we know that b is actually equal to k in this case, so k squared. Uh, a is equal to 2, and c is equal to 18. Uh, so in this particular case, what we have is that k squared minus 144 is equal to 0. And when we solve for k, what we will find out is that k is not only equal to 12, k is also equal to negative 12. If I take plus and minus the square root, the value squared, uh, that will give us 144 is positive or minus 12. Let's investigate that. If I graph, let's just graph this function here uh, where k has a value of 12. So let's graph the function 2 uh, x squared plus 12 x plus 18. And if I graph that, what you should see is that it has one root. That's what we expected. Uh, if I change this to negative 12, you'll see that I also have one root. And it's over here. Okay, so in that particular case, k could equal plus or minus 12. Uh, in the next one, it says the graph of the same function has no roots to determine the possible values of k. Well, we know that for there to be no roots, that b squared minus 4ac, or the discriminant, has to be less than 0, or in other words, negative. So we'll get k squared minus 4 times 2 times 18 has to be less than 0, or k squared minus 144 has to be less than 0, or k squared has to be less than 144. And you would expect that, in this case, k has to be less than plus or minus 12. Uh, this is actually not the case. Uh, because when we're solving for inequalities, uh, they actually have different solutions based on if you're dividing or multiplying by a negative value. Uh, so the easiest way to investigate this at this particular point is to think about a number line and ask yourself, what values, we know that there's important values of negative 12 and positive 12, what values of k, when I square them, will be less than 144? Uh, will, for example, negative 13 squared be less than 144? Uh, no, we get 169. Will any value in here squared be less than 144? Yeah, if I take 0 and square it, for example, I will get a value less than 144. So that will work. Uh, if I take 13 and square it, will that be less than 144? No. So the only possible solutions are between negative 12 and 12. So k in this particular case has to be between negative 12 and positive 12. I could show you uh, one example, but there are many. Take any value between negative 12 and positive 12. Uh, let's say, for example, uh, negative 10. And graph it. We should see that there's no roots. And there are no roots. We could take a whole bunch of examples if we change this value of k to maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe 5. 2x squared uh, plus 5x plus 18, and if I graph that, I will again see, this is actually not even on here, but if I was to expand this, you'd see that the graph was somewhere, probably way up here somewhere, and there's also no roots. So in this particular case, the values of k are between negative 12 and positive 12.